Hello. So I'm just going to go through a stack of things I picked up today. And uh, say the price I got them for and just have a look at the condition. I don't know about much about all any of them. Oh, not any of them. Some of them. So um, it's not much to say. But let's have a look at what I picked up. The first one was 50 cents from the hospice store. Chill out in Ibiza. Two. With 24 of the cooler summer groups. So this is, um, as you would imagine, some early 2000s chill out music although looking at some of it i wouldn't say it's all chill out this is stone roses on there i want to be adored that's not the kind of song i think of as a chill out song so we've got sneaker pimps chicane remember them moloko i'm trying to see other ones i recognize moby stone roses square circle chicane again cafe mambo um so yep yeah, that's worth a listen it's a double cd Looks to be in fine condition for a 2001 release. It's put out by Smart Records. Um, Bob Marley vs. Funk Star Deluxe. Is that that one? I'm a rainbow. Where is it? Uh, let's see if I can find it on here. Funk Star Deluxe. Oh, here are Bob. Sun and Shine. Is that? I like that song. I haven't heard that in years. Song Track 5, Sun and Shining. Bob Marley vs. Funk Star Deluxe. I remember in the summer of, in New Zealand, the summer of 99, going to 2000, you know, Y2K and all that, that, were, that song was a big hit that summer. So 50 cents, not bad. Pure Moods. Remember I did that, uh, probably you didn't, because about five people have watched it, but there, I did a video uh, last week about the Moods soundtracks. This is, I think, the American edition, which I talked about. I was saying that in New Zealand we called it uh, just moods. I've got one over here. Hang on a second. This one here, moods. Well, this and I was saying that it was it was in America. It was um, marketed as pure moods. Now I like that cover art. Very '90s New Age uh, aesthetic going on there. So I just wanted to get this, but here, 94. So remember, I, I, this is all the stuff I was talking about in that video that it was released initially in America in 94. Then it, because of its success, it was, um, it was uh, then released around the world in 97. And it looks like most of the songs are the same, but not all there. This one had some songs that are not on the, on the other one, such as that one there. I think, no, actually that one is on it. I think it's this one here. Mark Isham, my my wife with champagne shoulders. But anyway, I just wanted to have the pure moods one to add to the moods collection. So I had kind of the the originator, the genesis of the whole moods uh, series, pure moods. And like I said, I like that cover art. It's a little banged up here, but it's not cracked. It's good. It's got a scratch on the plastic. Not bad for a '94 release. I wonder if this was imported into New Zealand or if an American carried this with them back to New Zealand from America, or North America. Anyway, 50 cents for that. The CSI soundtracks. So I've talked before about my uh, soundtrack collection. The light here is terrible. Hang on, I'll try and change this one second. I think it's a bit better. Just rearrange the curtain so it wasn't so direct in the light. Uh, so I see me my I most of this, the soundtracks I own are of the 90s um, vintage and our movies as opposed to television but I thought I'd pick this up this was also 50 cents condition looks fine um, I've never watched an episode of CSI in my life or any of those crime those more modern police dramas I used to watch uh, what was the one dun, 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 dun. what was that Law, Law and Order Yes, Law and Order. Just the original Law and Order. Before it became Law and Order, the SUV and all that kind of stuff. Um, I watched the original Law and Order in the late 90s, early 2000s, and then it broke off into lots of different ones. I've never watched any NS, NSI, CS, whatever. All those police dramas, I've never watched any of them. Um, but on this soundtrack, oh, we've got The Who, The Wallflowers, New Order, Grand Theft Auto, never heard of them. Robbie Robinson, Robertson, I should say. Timo Mask, remember him? Um, I noticed we've got some John M. Keane, 
which I would assume is the orchestrated uh, kind of um, background incidental music. Yes, it says series music composed by John M. Keane. So I'd be interested to hear what that is. Anyway, that's that. 50 cents, 51st dates, another soundtrack. This is a 2004 movie, another movie I've never seen. And I really actually debated about getting these two. I was almost not going to get them. Because I was like, eh, it's not, it's not no, the 1990s, it's television. You've got no connection to them. But I thought, well, they've both got good cases. So if worse comes to worse, I can just biff, biff them and uh, keep the the cases. But I think I will. It's, you know, I don't know. I'm at a bit of a... um. And a bit of a crossroads with, with parts of my collection where how much I want to carry on building things that aren't necessarily I don't like the soundtrack. I've said before the soundtracks. I buy a lot of soundtracks even though I've never heard them before. I know nothing about them just because I'm trying to get as many soundtracks as possible. Sometimes I think, well, for what end? Like I do like soundtrack music, but I've got, to th I've got to think about this a bit more. But anyway, 50 cents. It's it's not the um the end of the world if I do get rid of them again. But anyway, some of the uh, artists on there, we've got 311 Seal, Wyclef, Wyclef Jean, Wyclef Jean, Ziggy Marley. A lot of kind of reggae. UB40, ugh. UB40 are huge in New Zealand. I've said before about reggae being huge in New Zealand, and I can't stand reggae can't stand UB40. Um, what did I get this? This is a lot of like uh, a lot of reggae on here. 311, that kind of reggae-ish as well, haven't they? They've got, they've got a few kind of reggae or dub type songs, don't they? Anyway, that. 50 cents, the Supremes. I love the Supremes. You can't hurry love. Now this looks like a real 80s compilation, doesn't it? Look at that photo they chose. That is after, that's, none of those are th those three are Diana Ross, are they? Uh, is, it's hard, it's actually, sometimes it's hard to recognize Diana Ross when she's younger. So maybe she, one of them is her, but I don't think any, any of those three are Diana Ross. But it features songs that Diana Ross is on, I hope. Look, this is 2002. They chose that photo in 2002. <laughs> and they've got this thing here. Big W, we sell for less, so sealed for your protection. Big W, never heard, I don't know what Big W is. That, that's not a New Zealand uh, company outlet. So I'm not sure where that comes from. But like I said, they've got all, all the hits. Stop in the name of love. Where did our love go? Love child, baby love. My favorite song of theirs, number 18, You Keep Me Hanging On. Um, I Hear a Symphony. Sometimes what I have come across, there's no liner notes in this. It's just a single sheet inlay. That's, that's never a good sign, if I'm being honest. What you find sometimes is that some a band and the Supremes would be a, a perfect example of this because they have the Diana Ross era and the post Diana Ross era, and they're from that they were signed to Motown, weren't they? I'm pretty sure they're a Motown band, and the contracts around some of those Motown acts were not the greatest and were open to a lot of kind of uh. Um, possible exploitation um, and so I've come across compilations recorded by for example the Supremes and then you play it and it's re-recorded badly versions of all the songs like uh, all my Muzak versions of the songs or I got a Glen Campbell one like that once I love Glen Campbell I got a Glen Campbell greatest hits one compilation once and you know when you you know that what the version sounds like you've heard it a million times you know what the drums sound like you know the production used on his on his vocals and even if it's a little bit off it's quite easy to tell and sometimes it's just wildly off and i would assume it's like it's been 
re-recorded because the licensing has passed hands from one company to another or they've sold it on or something like that. Um, so I hope that this isn't the case with this one because that it doesn't look promising. It's a 2002 release. It looks like it's from 1982. It's got this weird photo that it was, you know, out of all the pictures you could choose of the Supremes. And also, no, okay, anyway, 50 cents, again, who doesn't matter. This one was a dollar, John Martin Solid Air. Now, you wanna know why I chose this, or why I even looked at it? If, if this wasn't on the spine, I would probably wouldn't have picked it up if, at the store. It was, you know, it's in the shelf, spine showing, so you just see the artist's name and the, the album title and often the record company. And what do we see here? Very recognizable. Island, Island Records. Now I was talking yesterday about, or the day before, was it? What was the oh, XL? I was talking about a, a prodigy, and I was saying that XL record um, label is a. If I see a release and it's got the XL label on it, I'll pick it up and have a look, even if I've never heard of the artist, because XL has got a pretty good reputation of great artists and um, a high quality control. Island, I wouldn't go that far because I've seen some shit put out by Island, but it's a very easy to recognize. So here we got the U2, Aktung Baby, that kind of a rainbow, or not even rainbow, green, yellow, red, black. It's easy to, to, to kind of recognize in the on the shelves. Um, but Island, yeah, I think they, they've taken, they've put out some interesting stuff and they kind of take chances on artists, I think. They're, you know, they, they've got a little bit more to them than other record labels of, that major type anyway so what i did is if i'm a bit unsure about something very rarely do i do this because i can't really be bothered usually but i'll quickly get my phone and google just to get to see you know the genre and if um you know just a little bit about the album like if there's any like kind of rating or something quickly well this uh was titled as folk jazz folk now, the jazz interested me because if it was just folk, folk, this is from the 1970s, 60s and 70s folk, yeah, I'm a bit iffy on. It can be very, very one-dimensional. And if you've heard one, you've heard them all. And I know that might be not a bit unfair, but it's just, I've been, I guess I've been burnt before. But, um, but the jazz folk, and there was a few other words I used, and it kind of made me think, mm, okay, that sounds a little bit interesting. Then I looked at the reviews. It was getting five stars across the board. Four and a half, five stars. I thought, okay, well, this looks interesting. And then it said it related him to Nick Drake. And Nick Drake is a folk artist that I like. Um, so I took a chance. I paid the dollar. And um, I'll be interested in hearing this. This is something that um, I, I've never heard of John Martin before. Maybe that makes me sound like a bit of a... Um, musical philistine but it's true 1973 it says um and there he is there solid air to see if there's anything else i can recognize any other names no um okay last two this was at the spca charity shop spca is i guess they have that in america i think in britain they call it the rspca animal protection society um so they have shops that you know raise money for animals and they had a special two for two so usually that you can see that the label on there two dollars each but it was today though maybe or well, maybe it's always but it had a sign up that i didn't see there last time two cds for two dollars so if you bought two of them you got one of them free basically buy one get one free that's quite a cool cover, very very psychedelic. Um, this is Moody Blues, In Search of the Lost Chord. Now, I don't know much about the Moody Blues. I know Nights in White Satin, and I know another 80s song of theirs that we used to make fun of, I remember, when I was a teenager. One of my mate's parents had like a, a 70s or 80s Moody Blues where they'd gone kind of cheesy synth pop. and um, I wouldn't even say synth pop. Anyway, it was it was this ridiculous song. What was it called? Long time no see, <laughs> something like that. And we used to play it and laugh. 
But anyway, this looks like from their 60, late 60s heyday, 68 on Decca. Um, pressed, issued in uh, 86. And there's the old Moody Blues. Graham Edge, heard of him, and John Lodge, the other two I've heard of. Um, <laughs> some interesting photos here. And there's the CD, and it looks to be in pretty good condition for an 86 CD. This has been taken care of. As has the booklet. Very uh, new age 60s spiritual spirituality, Eastern mysticism, that kind of stuff. To anyone who has practiced meditation or yoga, the word mantra. Okay, well, there we go. We can we can guess which way we're going there. One of the songs is, good, is called Om. Um, so, you know, 68. It was all in full, full swing then, wasn't it? Om. House of Four Doors, Voices in the Sky. Ride my seesaw. <laughs> anyway, and then lastly, another soundtrack. This one is something that did seem a bit more interesting. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Remember that movie? It was uh, really the first Guy Ritchie movie that was... I, I don't know if he actually had a movie before that, but it's firstly the fir certainly the first one I've seen. Um, this was put out on Island as well, but it doesn't have the typical Island coloring 27 tracks on this i would guess some of them are um maybe kind of interstitial music uh, like um scenes you know like on the pulp fiction soundtrack how they have like um you can hear the the audio from the movie basically of different scenes zed's dead's baby zed's dead baby and the hold up in the in the restaurant honey bunny Maybe there's some of that. So we got here, we got um, Ocean Color Scene, James Brown. Trying to see, it's quite a small writing, isn't it? Uh, the Stooges, I Want to Be Your Dog. Great song. Robbie Williams, Get Out. Castaways. A lot of stuff by John Murphy and David Hughes. Fool's Gold, Stone Roses. Oh, so we've got another Stone Roses. There were Stone Roses on the first one I sure got. Um, but it looks like some interesting stuff on there, and I'll be looking forward to listening to that. There is the CD. Probably some movie scenes and whatnot in this, I would assume. Liner notes. Jason Statham. I haven't seen that movie for years. But yeah, not bad. Not bad for a, a pretty quick, about about an hour, I was looking around different places. Um, today I had off work because I went to a concert last night, so I thought I didn't want to get up for work at 3.30 in the morning, so I took I got, took a, a leave day. So $2, so a dollar, dollar, one, two, three dollars, three fifty, four. Four fifty five, five dollars fifty for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight CDs. Oops, <laughs> not bad, eh? Um, so I've I've done I've now with that today I've done pretty much the 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 circuit of most of the ones I look in my local area. Probably give it a couple, a couple of nights before I look again because otherwise you're just coming across the same things again and again, unless you get particularly lucky. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching.